616, time now for What's Trending. While Earth's volcanoes are spewing lava, scientists say Pluto had much cooler volcanic eruptions. A new study reveals the dwarf planet has giant ice volcanoes that were active recently as 100 to 200 million years ago. The discovery was made during NASA's New Horizons mission. Researchers point to a region of Pluto largely made of bumpy water ice and filled with volcanic domes. One volcano is similar in volume to one of Earth's biggest volcanoes, Mauna Loa in Hawaii. Still, researchers say the volcanoes on the frigid planet look nothing like they have already seen in other parts of the solar system. They believe when Pluto's volcanoes erupted, a cold mixture of ice and water flowed out like toothpaste onto the planet's surface. So you know, how about that? You learn something new about Pluto. I didn't even know about... Um, they had volcanoes on, so that's something new I learned this morning. I'm learning a lot today, I've noticed, but uh, it's also, it sounds like they had water on Pluto. Yeah, possibly water on Pluto, which now that the questions start, I mean, was there, could there, I don't know, it's far away from the sun, so maybe not life, but, or maybe there was. It's hard to say now because- They could have just adapted to volcanoes. their super cold uh, temperatures there too. Yeah, I mean, it's a dwarf planet, so obviously a little bit of a different uh, orbit than uh, yeah. what most planets around the sun do, but it's definitely very interesting. Uh, learn more about Pluto though and ice volcanoes and uh, 100 to 200 million years ago. I don't know if I call that recent. Yeah, it's not that recent, but it's like in the dinosaur ages, really. Yeah, when you really think about it, yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. But you ready to keep things going? With yep, the, uh, I like the space story. theme we got. I like the space theme too. NASA released a new image from the Hubble Space Telescope of the most distant single star it's ever observed. Nicknamed Arendelle, it's glimmering 28 billion light years away. The star could be between 50 to 500 times more massive than our sun and millions of times, um, scientists say, it's the oldest detection of a star yet. Estimating it was created 900 million years after the Big Bang and the observation of Arendelle could help. Astronomers investigate the, the early years of the universe. A study detailing the findings was published in the journal Nature on Wednesday. And how cool is that? That is a long distance star there and it's bigger than our sun. And I mean, our sun is a very powerful star yeah, already. It's, I think I remember in school, they, uh, like teachers would always say the sun is a only like a medium-sized star. Yeah, it's only medium, and in fact, it seems big to us, and it's only mm -hmm. a medium star. Man. I can't imagine how big that would actually be. Yeah, wait. Now, did you have a telescope growing up? I did, I, I actually still own a telescope. I don't use it much. My okay. parents are gonna rip my head off for that because I don't <laughs> I don't use my telescopes much. I need to get, find more time to do it, especially yeah. here in the beautiful Northwoods. Yeah, but. I've always struggled when, because uh, I had a telescope growing up. I don't, I think it was just like a garage sale one, but I oh, could yeah. never really find, or I had issues like, finding an image on it or finding stars and constellations and stuff. So I always struggled looking up into space with it. Yeah, it's always kind of cool though. I mean, it's always fun when you get to learn more about mm -hmm. a science and everything though. And man, this telescope in outer space, Hubble, it's an old telescope, but yeah. still serves very well. And uh, the name of the star, I hope I'm saying it right because it makes me think of Frozen right away. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's an interesting way of putting it. I think you pronounced it right, but I'm not 100% so sure either. So I don't know, we'll, we'll just have to see. <laughs> For sure, and let's keep our space theme going as NASA reports a massive of solar flare erupted from the sun Wednesday afternoon. The burst was powerful enough to cause a short-term radio blackout in some areas. That means some airplane pilots, boat captains, and ham radio operators may have noticed the disturbance. NASA classifies the event as an X-class flare, and more powerful solar flares can pose dangers to satellites, power lines, and even astronauts in space. And there's a chance the flare could cause an aurora, a stunning light show in the sky, but no confirmation of that yet. And you know, we keep hearing about these um, uh, like solar or the solar burst, did they pronounce that solar right? Flare. Solar flare, excuse me. Um, and do they actually, they cause the uh, like the northern lights, that's what they do. They do cause the northern lights, Aurora Borealis, okay. and that's what you see like up, up in like the North Pole, Alaska, even up here in the north woods of Wisconsin when the clouds aren't in the way, we can 
You would see them up here too. I haven't seen them. Have you seen them before? No, I really want to see them. No, it's so, really cool. So I think it made it sound like we can. I think it's on different articles somewhere that the Northern Lights could be visible this weekend. I don't know if that's. Have you heard that at all, or? This is the first time I'm hearing a bit. So okay. I mean, po um, but yeah, that's kind of very interesting. And also, uh, man, goodness, I'm trying to come up with with another comment right now, and it's not all right. coming. To well, me right uh, now. Can, do you think we'll be able to see it like this weekend if we uh, <sighs> if it happens this weekend? I'm not so sure though, because we do have the clouds in the okay. way though. Without rain, it's no chance. So it's gonna be kind of goofy to really kind of think about or to really kind of see them or not. But uh, it'll be kind of cool. But.